please welcome Rick Solis. <laughs> It's working? Okay, thank you, Steve. Appreciate the introduction. Um, first, I'll start by saying that even though uh, most people would, would say it's probably not true, I am a native Texan despite my lack of an accent. So I'd like to welcome you all to my state, the one I've lived in my whole life. Uh, I'm not sure I would have necessarily chosen July for an Austin event, but uh, uh, you know, I, I'm sure everyone's gonna have a good time and, and, and certainly, uh, certainly hope you can explore a little bit uh, when you can uh, while you're here. Uh, before I get into my discussion, I, I want to say I'm going to be throwing out the terms the business of IT or IT as a business quite a bit during my talk. And it's a very difficult concept for those of us in IT to comprehend sometimes. We often think of ourselves as a service provider, and when we hear the word business, we often think about the businesses that the IT organization supports. Well, when I'm using those terms and, and the, the thread for this whole presentation today, I'm really talking about how we operate ourselves as a business organization, one that contributes value to the rest of the corporation, um, and one that we have to put focus on and we have to think about from a strategic perspective. So when I use those words, I just want to make sure you have that context for what I'm talking about. So this morning, I'll be talking about a number of things. Um, I've got a couple of introductory slides, one just a little bit about ExxonMobil as a company, uh, and a little bit about um, the ExxonMobil IT organization, just to provide some context about uh, the rest of the presentation. Then I'll be talking about a journey, and uh, we often don't talk about multi-year journeys um, in the IT world because things change so rapidly, but um, I do want to start about 16 years ago and tell you where we've been and where we've come from, and, and I think that'll provide some good context for where we're going. Uh, I do want to spend some time talking about disruptors um, because it seems like things are disrupting the business of IT more and more as, as every year goes by. Every time we think we've got it figured out, something else uh, comes along that makes us rethink that. So I want to talk a little bit about that, and then I'll get more specifically into the IT planning cycle that we use um, at ExxonMobil with our other businesses as well as ourselves. Um, and then I'll get into the kind of the heart of the presentation, which is around how we're leveraging the IT for IT standard uh, in that process. Um, I'll tell you why we're using it. I'll tell you about a structure we've put in place um, to take advantage of it. And then I'll talk about how we're doing some gap analysis from an architecture perspective. And then I'll talk a little bit about where we're going from here. And I do believe we'll have plenty of time for questions and answers because I don't have a large number of slides. So I think we'll be able to get through the material fairly quickly. Uh, just a little bit about ExxonMobil. Um, I'm sure most of you, have, if not all of you, have heard of us. Uh, we have a presence on six continents around the world. We do not have operations in, in Antarctica, but everywhere else. Uh, we have more than 75,000 employees, and there are three main businesses that the IT organization has to support in ExxonMobil. The upstream is where we explore for and produce oil and gas. The downstream is where we refine that crude oil into marketable products like fuels and, and lubes. And the chemical company um, also takes those uh, crude products and turns them into marketable chemical products, um, which actually touch just about every, every product uh, family that, that exists that you use in your everyday lives. As a chemical company, we're actually uh, among the largest chemical companies in the world as if, if it stood alone. From an IT perspective, I'm going to be using the acronym EMIT, um, which is what we call ourselves, ExxonMobil IT. We do have a global functional IT organization. Uh, we have a presence in 50 countries and about 7,000 uh, EMIT associates that are providing that IT support um, for the company as a whole. There's a few other stats on the slide. I'm not going to go through those. You can kind of read them for yourselves, but that just gives you a little bit of information about the scale of the operations that we have um, that we have to support across our various business lines. So let me talk about this journey. Um, this journey kind of begins over 15 years ago when two very, very large corporations, Exxon and Mobil, uh, merged in one of the largest mergers that's ever been uh, executed. As you can imagine, both companies had very large IT operations, um, but, most, but both of them also had multiple IT organizations. Generally, it was organized by business line or by geography. Um, and so it was, as, as it is in many corporations at, in that time and day and age, um, the, the IT organizations were very, and the operations were very kind of disparate and maybe loosely connected at best. 
When Exxon and Mobil merged in 2000, the, the, the really the, the focus of IT at that time was let's just try to figure out how to mash these things together. <laughs> so, you know, how do we consolidate similar operations? How do we potentially rationalize tools that we're using across the board? One huge example was Exxon was a, uh, an, uh, an Outlook exchange shop and, and Mobile was a Lotus Notes uh, organization. Uh, believe it or not, at the time, the decision was to go with Lotus Notes. Uh, even, even as late as 2000, because uh, mobile had a very large infrastructure built uh, around their collaboration, uh, the, the collaboration capabilities there, and they had built lots of at collaboration applications on that platform. We're now an Outlook Exchange shop again, by the way, but uh, at the time we did go with that. But it's just examples like that. If you think about the scale of, and the size of our companies, trying to figure out how to bring those things together, nobody had time to think about being efficient or how do we you know, deliver value to our business. It was all about how do we just make the dang thing work? <laughs> uh, and that was really the focus on early. Uh, in about 2004, um, we had gotten things a little bit more organized, and then we started thinking about, okay, well, how can we, how can we become more efficient, uh, just like the rest of ExxonMobil was looking at doing that. And it was really our first foray into the offshoring world at that time. We created a number of business support centers around the world, uh, and we were looking at how can we do more standardization, um, and how can we get um, cheaper resources uh, to deliver the IT services globally. Uh, around the same time, uh, we actually formed the organization EMIT, or Emmet as it's known. Uh, it had been a named a couple of predecessor things before that, uh, but that was really the first time that, since the merger, that we had two, uh, that one distinct global functional organization supporting IT. In 2010, we finally figured out that we needed to put a little more investment in ourselves as a business of IT. Uh, we had many opportunities to rationalize what we were doing, uh, simplification, process simplification, automation opportunities, they were, they were everywhere. And fortunately, we got senior management to agree at the time that they really needed to invest in a pretty substantial program of work to address all of that. So we had a, a multi-year program that was launched around 2010, and we called it Emmet 2.0. Uh, obviously saying we needed to go through a new generation of IT, what are the things we needed to put together. That was the first time, oops, oops, lost the, uh, there we go, lost the monitor for a minute. Uh, it was also the first time that we looked really outside of our industry for some guidance. Um, we looked at ITIL very closely uh, and really adopted many of the ITIL processes uh, to, in, our, in our IT operations at the time. We educated the whole organization on that. We built process management structures around that. Um, and it really served us well for kind of trying to be more consistent about the way we delivered our services. At the time, we also created a business center of expertise um, after the program was completed that still exists today that provides process guidance around the IT organization uh, on how to do things in a more common and, and standard way around the world. The next evolution was really around 2014, and as all organizations have to do, seems to be, fre seems to be frequently, uh, we had to reorganize. Uh, there was a feeling that we weren't kind of organized optimally to deliver those, those services, so we had an organizational effectiveness study that went on, and we had quite a few significant changes in the organization. But you know, the interesting thing is, no matter how you draw the lines on an org chart, and reorganize them and redraw them, you're still gonna have silos. <laughs> uh, we've always lived with that, we're always gonna live with that, and so we really had to think about, even if you're using common processes, if everyone on that org chart is really looking at their own, um, their, their own goals and their own strategies, independent of the others, then you're not really being optimized across the whole operation or the whole value chain. And that's gonna lead me into why we're really looking and very interested in it and why we've leveraged the IT for IT concepts uh, in a few slides. Uh, one last change that I'll mention, because it's the current one we're going through, um, one of many changes, of course, is the whole sur sourcing world. We have, uh, starting last year, um, we've really um, started to use and leverage managed service providers um, for the first time uh, in delivering some of our major services. Uh, I know a lot of other companies have done that, used that model for a while, but we had really not kind of gone full steam into that uh, until starting last year. So that, that is another major change in the way we're delivering our IT services. Uh, that was causing us to really look for how we can do this better. Um, so I'd like to talk about some of the disruptors. Looks like, oh, 
I had some animation on this, doesn't look like we got the right version out there, so apologize for that. Um, but that's okay, we'll just go through them one at a time. Uh, if we look at, um, the, starting at the at kind of the top left, the major business disruptor, of course, for us, especially over the last couple of years, has been the oil price environment. Anybody who's familiar with the news or have heard anything, if you haven't lived under a rock, you know that the oil prices have fallen substantially. Most people are happy about that because it means your gas prices are lower when you go fill up your car. Uh, but it does have pretty wide ranging impacts on our industry, especially here in Texas. Um, if you live in this area, uh, especially in the Houston area, th there's a significant impact not only to our own company, but to lots of other industries that kind of are peripheral to the oil and gas industry. What that means from an IT perspective is that the business is consistently looking for us not only to be more efficient but, and, and do it more cheaply, but really looking for us to how, how we can add value to their operations, right? Because they don't have the luxury of living in a high price environment and probably won't for some time. So you know, we have to be able to deliver substantial value to the bottom line that they can leverage. Kind of moving around the circle on the top right, the other thing they're doing is you know, even though we're a very industrial company, uh, they've seen the light with regard to digitization. Um, it took them a little while, but they've, they've kind of realized that even in a very industrial company, you have lots of opportunities uh, for a more digital kind of business model. And so they're coming to IT and saying, how can we get more mobile solutions? How can we look at sensors in a different way? Internet of things, robotics, um, you know, all kinds of higher level technologies that can ultimately help the business that they're doing. Um, and so that's, that's also pushing us in some different directions. Kind of the bottom three pictures are more around how we deliver our services internally uh, within the business of IT. I already mentioned the outsourcing journey that we've been on and are, and are on uh, there to the right. At the bottom left, I'm sorry, the, the, the bottom center, uh, all of our cloud efforts, much more platform infrastructure uh, and software as a service uh, have become a reality in our organization. So that's changing the way we, we sort of deliver things. And, and cultural shifts like the whole um, DevOps shift and, and agile. Uh, we have an agile support center now. We have a DevOps strategy organization. They're joined at the hip, and they've actually leveraged a lot of the IT for IT concepts on some of the white papers that the uh, IT for IT forum has put together as they're trying to formulate kind of that strategy and how you affect some of that cultural change. Because a lot of Dev DevOps is all about culture, uh, not necessarily around technologies and support. So while all these changes, um, we have to think about how do we use, how do we rethink the way we're doing strategic planning for IT. The, the uh, cycle I've got here on the page is really kind of representing a process we've been using with our other business lines for quite some time. Uh, so for example, the production company or exploration or marketing, we have re relationship managers in place that work with the enterprise um, architecture organization and the business architects in that group. And we've been doing this for years. You know, they meet on a regular basis. They try to understand what are the business strategies, the priorities, uh, the, the demands that they have, and how do we translate that into the IT capabilities and IT technologies that we need to deliver to those organizations. So we go through that process. We call that our IT strategic plan process, or ITSP. Um, our CIO this year has challenged us to rethink the way we've named that and start calling them digital plans. So uh, not just thinking about strategically how, you know, uh, as an IT plan, but you know, recognizing that as our businesses go more digital, how do we support that? So you'll hear me say the word strategic plan and digital plan kind of interchangeably because we're in that transition, kind of using those terms. Uh, so the funny thing is we've been doing that process for years with our other business lines. And until last year, we had never really done it for ourselves. Um, you know, all of our, techno all our technology um, service providers, all our, our service uh, owners, they would think about strategy, but they would think about it in terms of their technology delivery, right? So how am I going to deliver Windows um, server solutions more efficiently and, and, and you know, longer term, how I'm when am I gonna go to Windows 10 and all those sorts of uh, concepts. They didn't think about, wait a minute, if IT is a business too, should I be going through this exercise where I look at the business of IT and saying, what is our business strategy and how do we ultimately enable the IT solutions that we need ourselves to enable those business strategies? So this is the cycle we're going through at the moment uh, this year. It's, it's an annual process. Our CIO actually this year has um, launched a strategic reassessment. Uh, so basically the last strategic assessment we did as an organization was about five years ago. So it's looking at the last five years where we've come and then looking at where we need to go kind of over the next five years. So that's a key input 
into where we need to be from a business IT perspective. Also, we've got the business and technology trends that I discussed a couple of slides ago. And we have all those strategies that I've already mentioned that we've done for a long time. So all the individual services have their own strategies. Organizations always do strategy work uh, on their own. Um, and one thing we've added is thinking about what are our strategies around the IT for IT value chains? And how do we kind of leverage that and think about that from an organization and service independent perspective? All of those things are being brought together into what we're calling a unified digital plan uh, or unified IT strategic plan uh, that we actually have a meeting August 1st where we're bringing a lot of the individual strategies together. We're spending a day together with a lot of the thought leaders and, and, and the output of that is intended to be what are our most important items from a business strategy perspective that we need to be looking at and use that to prioritize our IT investments. The annual investment profile is a result of that. Um, it's a bit of a challenge in our organization because of the way our budgets are cut up, but by really reaching out and looking at the value chain from a non-service, non-organization perspective, we're able to sort of bring all that together and think about it and make sure we're looking at it and aligning on the right priorities. So why we leverage IT for IT in this process? All the disruptors I've talked about, all the things that are changing in the IT world today, it's really forcing more of the strategic thinking across the whole value chain. And you see the IT for IT value chain there at the bottom. If you're not familiar with IT for IT, I encourage you to, 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 uh, to look at that a little bit more closely and, and see what we're talking about. It's a concept that resonates with people in our organization when we talk about it. Uh, and I think it resonates with anybody that works in the world of IT, is, is to think about the business, uh, the value streams within our business that make up the overall value chain. One of the other reasons is, you know, we think there's lots of opportunity for additional uh, data and application integration and automation across the value streams. Um, historically, you know, I think we're like most IT organizations. Um, somebody finds a tool they think are going to help them deliver their service better. They bring in the tool. Next year, somebody else in another service area brings in a different tool. Then somebody says, oh, we need to cook these things together. We need to use the same data. So you get a lot of this point-to-point -point integration. And what you end up with, if you look at our as-is map, is a lot of spaghetti, right? <laughs> things pointing different directions, people using data in, this, in different places uh, that could be leveraged from one spot, et cetera. And the last point, and, and the real driver for us, is you know increased user expectations, right? I'm sorry, this one did have the animation. Uh, increased user expectations are driving our business to be transparent. You know the the businesses that we support, they don't care what part of IT get, delivers their solutions or who's responsible for what. They just want it to work. So the more we can think seamlessly across the various services that we deliver, the better. And, and the more credibility we can have with our business in that uh, you know, we just make it work in the end. I want to give you three specific examples of some of this thinking that fortunately uh, you know, getting people to think kind of across the value chain has, has really helped us with. The first one is, and it kind of covers the whole value chain there at the bottom, is technology business management. So we've done a lot of work from a process and tool perspective around cost transparency of our IT services. And it, in order to enable that, it has caused us to have to bring all kinds of data from all kinds of systems together that we never really had to do before. You know, For example, if I'm trying to find the total cost of uh, ownership for, for a business application, you know, I need to know what's the cost of the software, I need to understand what the infrastructure that it's, that it's residing on, what's the cost of that infrastructure. Uh, I even need to understand when the support analysts are writing time to support that, uh, that piece of software. That, that's a part of the total cost as well, right? So those are all, that data all comes from different systems in our environment. And we really had to think about how those systems kind of connect together and strategically, how do we want them to connect, to be connect together better so we can get that uh, information that we need at the highest level. Another example, and I've got it there at the bottom left, is strategy to portfolio linkages. What I mean by that is we're doing a lot of work to further enable uh, connecting business strategies and objectives to um, relevant IT demands, to relevant IT projects, and relevant IT architecture objects that are associated with those. Um, I think we heard some good talk yesterday around, around some of this perspective, and I think you know, the more you can potentially connect the, that, those pieces of information, uh, the better you can think about what, what you need to be doing to, to better support those business strategies. Um, 
we do a lot of that work today now, but it's done in PowerPoints and in Excel, and, and every business line does it separately or differently. Um, so we're really looking at how we digitally enable some of those processes a little bit better. But to do that, you have to bring the project management folks together. You have to bring the strategy people together. You have to bring the architects and all of whom have typically worked in silos. So this is helping us bring that together. The last one, and I talked about this cultural shift already around uh, Agile and DevOps. Um, I think uh, you know, one of the things that we have been able to leverage, as I mentioned before, is uh, there's been a lot of good work by the IT for IT Forum in this particular area uh, that our Agile and DevOps teams are looking at uh, and have tried to leverage and figure out how we can ultimately bring those things together in the context of the, the overall value chain. Uh, another thing I wanted to share with you, and this is, this is one thing that we, really, this is one way we started to leverage IT right away last year. Uh, we developed an internal advisory council. We actually call it IT for Emmett, uh, just to kind of personalize it with the Emmett IT organization. Uh, we established that last year, and it's actually organized not by org chart, not by technical service, but by IT for IT value stream and supporting activities. So we have a strategy to portfolio owner, and we have a requirement to, to deploy owner, um, et cetera, and we have an owner for the supporting activities as well. And they're intended to kind of represent cross-organizational and cross-service perspective, uh, and this is the group that we are bringing together on August 1st to do that kind of cross-strategy analysis. Where do we have the common needs? Where, where should we really be putting the priorities across the organization? The objectives of the group, I'm not going to go through those in detail, but it's really around ultimately implementing and aligning on what that digital plan for Emmett as a customer or IT as a business is. Uh, and the other thing that we're hoping to get out of this group and we are getting out of this group is they're also helping evangelize the message of IT for IT within our organization. Um, I, won't, uh, I won't lie to you and tell you that if you asked anyone in Emmett, they would necessarily know what IT for IT is or, or how it applies to them, but we're making good progress and we're getting influence across the organization and getting people to think about, even if you don't know the acronym IT for IT, thinking about the value chain, how things fit together, how, how things should integrate, uh, and, and, you know, and, and that's the value that we're bringing, uh, that we're getting out of, the, out of this process. The last uh, major area I want to talk about before I call in next steps is, is really around a, a little bit lower level. So I've been talking kind of at the value chain level. The other thing that IT for IT from a reference architecture perspective brings us is an opportunity to really do some gap analysis from an architecture perspective. This chart is a very, very high level representation of work we're doing at a lower level to kind of represent where the various tools that we have um, kind of fit on this space, um, kind of fit across the value stream. Uh, that the color coding is, you know, where are the tools strategic, where do we have a mix of strategic and non-strategic, and where do we have kind of non-strategic tools that are out there. Uh, like I said, this is a very high level rep representation, and um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy to talk with anyone more, you know, kind of offline about maybe some more specific aspects of this, but one thing it showed us, you know, even at a very high level, you can sort of see, well, we've historically invested on the right side of this, right? Uh, and this, I think, is true of almost any IT organization. We've, we've focused on the run side, the operation side. Uh, you know, most people that implement ITIL implement those kind of ITIL processes and not necessarily so much the others. Uh, and so, you know, we're able to show that, hey, we've got some gaps where we're using tools that are, aren't really tools. Uh, you know, the project and portfolio management space, which is red here, we've launched a, a study this year uh, because Historically, we're using um, you know, things like Microsoft Project, but we're using Excel and PowerPoint and other things and homegrown tools to, to kind of keep track of project execution when there's a lot of good PPM tools out there that we need to be looking at so, uh, and potentially investing in. So that kind of analysis is the kind of thing that we're getting out of really kind of plotting our existing solutions against an IT for IT reference architecture backdrop. Um, and, we, and doing it not only at the value stream level, but doing it down at the functional component level. Uh, and that's the work that we're, we're doing and part of, part of the main responsibilities of my role with, uh, with ExxonMobil. All right, um, so just to wrap up from a slide perspective, um, where are we going from here? Uh, this gap analysis and the strategy work that we're doing around the business of IT is really helping us kind of figure out 
where do we need to be going from a future state architecture perspective? I've got lots of as-is pictures. We've got a few to-be pictures, but we really need some more. We really need to get some alignment across the organization on where it is we want to be. And really, the gap analysis that I talked about and the strategic planning I talked about are the way we're going to get there. I already talked about the enhanced digital enablement of the planning and architecture capabilities, so the, the strategy to portfolio work that we're trying to do. Uh, the, the advisory group is helping us increase the visibility of the IT for IT um, framework and, and standard within uh, Emmet. Um, and you know, not to forget our license to operate, um, we do have a lot of core IT management systems in place that we have to continue to invest in uh, and revitalize, right? Or they will become stale very quickly uh, and not bring the value that they need to bring forward. So we can't just always think about the new and exciting things that we, we have to uh, uh, architect, but also the, the revitalization of the core that we run our business on. All right, so uh, uh, in, in closing, uh, before we get into kind of q and I, I just want to say I uh, appreciate the opportunity to speak to you today. I did want to extend my thanks to all the members of the IT for IT forum. Uh, many of those folks have worked for a couple of years now, uh, many, many hours, uh, and uh, a lot of it on their own time to be able to deliver a product that customers like us can, can leverage. Um, so we appreciate the, the forum work and the open group support in, in the IT for IT activities. Thank you. Thank you. If you could take a seat, we'll, right. uh, we'll take some questions. <clears throat> one, of the, one of the things that, that I'm personally interested in is, is how and when did ExxonMobil hear about the IT for IT approach to life? Um, so it was a, it's probably almost two years ago now, maybe between one and a half and, and two years. Um, the predecessor in my role um, that I'm in today uh, I believe was talking to uh, to one of the vendor representatives that's involved in in mm -hmm. IT for IT and got uh, kind of got connected to it. Um, I was in a it was, I was in a different role, but I was also working in the business of IT from a process integration perspective. Mm -hmm. um, so we were kind of working in the same space. And uh, he mentioned this this uh, new standard that was evolving and being put together. And um, like I said. Most people, when they hear about it and hear about the value chain and uh, the way things hook together, it resonates. Uh, people, people really sort of get it. Um, and then when you answer the inevitable questions around, well, how is this different from ITIL or how does it, does it replace ITIL or enhance, you know, you have to kind of get through some of those questions. But, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, but my predecessor got involved and I, I certainly picked it up because I felt a lot of uh, passion for it as well. Right. Okay. Good to know. So some questions from the audience. Um, Regarding planning or alignment with products and services in Emmet and IT for IT, please describe beyond it must work how you score or model risk before you execute. Is it just about cost? No, risk is um, <laughs> risk is, is, is when you work in a, in a in an industry like oil and gas mm -hmm. um, culturally. Uh, you know, you work in a very risk-intensive environment, uh, whether you're talking about oil and gas operations, uh, or, or, and so culturally it's something that we, we definitely uh, consider as well. Uh, I think, uh, but, but one of the things that I think um, this perspective or that IT for IT is bringing us is, is that, you know, we're not just thinking about risk from a, you know, cybersecurity perspective, but also, um, risk of, of sort of not being effective with the solutions that, you, that you're bringing in, or, or the risk of bringing in an application that doesn't interoperate with anything else, or that isn't being considered on how it might connect with other things. Um, so def definitely an area of importance for us as well. Okay. Uh, IT for X, where X equals Emmet. Please can you comment on how this change helps to sell bigger, more enterprise business viewpoint inside the organization? Well, I think um, one thing we were, you know, I think it helps us personalize it within, within uh, our organization. Uh, if I was just using sort of the generic IT for IT um, terminology, uh, it, it wouldn't necessarily resonate with folks as, as much as, as, the, as, as naming it something that people are very familiar with sort of in, internally. Um, I don't know that uh, we've reached a point where the business lines that Emmet supports um, necessarily uh, understand it or, or know what we're talking about. And, you know, from their perspective, they, they want good service from the IT provider. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think in terms of getting alignment and getting support from the various organizations within IT, 
uh, basically just personalizing it like that, I think, uh, internally uh, is, is helping drive some of that. Okay. And uh, last question before we wrap up then. Um, how would you describe the experience of implementing this standard inside an organization like ExxonMobil or within ExxonMobil um, from a point of view of you know, what, what lessons did you learn or what, what um, barriers did you face, that kind of thing? Was it relatively straightforward or did you well, have Well, it's, it's, we're still on the journey. Yeah. Um, so I think one of the challenges with anything like this is, um, is getting uh, folks with disparate point of views and, and different, um, different perspectives on what's important um, mm -hmm. to sort of align on it. Um, I, I think we're still on that journey. Um, I think, uh, and, and then the other challenge or the lesson learned is, I think trying to reach as many people across the organization as, as, you, as you can at a working level um, is very important. I think we heard some of that um, yesterday as well, because um, if, you're, if, you're, if you're just looking at you know, sort of CIO level support, <laughs> uh, you know, people change and, and I think you've got to kind of maintain that uh, at the little bit lower levels of the organization. So uh, that's the approach we've, we've taken, putting this advisory council in place um, <clears throat> because we have, representatives from all around the organization. Mm -hmm. um, you know, again, they're helping us sort of um, spread that message and get support for it. But uh, it's, uh, it's, not e it's not easy um, right. because everyone, you know, the, the, the function, you know, and, and part of it is, you know, and I think this is true in every organization, ultimately when people get their performance assessed and, and their salary treatments and those sorts of things, you know, typically the first thing a manager is, is looking for in, in, in one of their employees is, you know, how are they doing their job and how are they supporting the objectives of that organization. Right. Uh, and so getting people to think about, well, how am I adding value to the broader organization yeah. and to the broader uh, value stream uh, is not something that necessarily gets rewarded immediately. So right. you have to fight those battles as well. Right. Keep the faith. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Well, we'll leave it there, Rick. We're out, we're out of time. But thank you very much for your All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm.